But we wanted to start with uh, some big movement on a story, of course, we've been tracking for months now with the assistance of Unusual Whales, and that is the push to ban members of Congress from trading stock. One of the biggest obstacles to making any change there is one of the biggest whales herself, Nancy Mm -hmm. Pelosi. She has been put under enough political pressure now, and we'll break down for you exactly how that happened, that she has actually shifted her position on this, and now it looks possible that a bill will actually move through the House. Let's put this Axios reporting up on the screen. Pelosi buckles, pushes stock trading ban. She said on Wednesday that a bill could be put forward, quote, very soon, and she said she would support legislation that imposes more harsh fines for lawmakers who violate the Stock Act. Of course, that's sort of a little bit meaningless. But the fact that she is willing to move on a bill that would actively ban stock trading, incredibly significant. Let's put the next piece here up on the screen that has her specific comments. She says, I'm a big believer in our committees. There are certain criteria I wanted to see. We have to tighten the Stock Act. It has to be government-wide. The judiciary has no reporting of stock transactions, and it makes important decisions every day. So the marker she's laying down there, just to make it really clear, she's saying, like, I'm open to this, banning stock trading. We're going to move, but it has to include the judiciary in particular, and the Supreme Court, all branches of government, which, fine. I, I support that. Totally support that. Right. But it was interesting that she added that to the mix. The run thing I want to flag for everyone is that everything dies in committee. I've seen this story a million times, and so have you, Crystal. I support X. Um, that's why I'm going to have my House Ways and Means Committee drafted. And then nine months later, after it's been marked up and all of that, nothing ends up happening. So be extremely wary. This is not an yes. actual fold. This is a rhetorical fold. Rhetorical folds do matter, certainly. Yeah. And I want to parse her, parse her language, too. We have to tighten the Stock Act. No, 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 no. That's not what we're asking. We don't care about the Stock Act, which merely requires you to disclose your trades and then pay a measly fine if you don't report it, which many of these people which do. they're oftentimes in violation exactly. of and don't care. We yes. don't want to tighten the Stock Act. We want to ban stock trading Period. So they're going to try and weasel their little ways out of this one in every rhetorical flourish that they possibly can. That was an immediate red flag to me. That being said, her saying that she's open to the ban itself and kicking it to the committee is important. From and what? Oh, go ahead. One other thing I do want to say to your point. Yeah. The other trick that they'll use, and Schumer has been very effective at this, is when there's something that's really politically popular. Right that they don't actually want to do, but they want to pretend like they want to do, they'll insert something into it mm-hmm. that's a non-starter that like causes it to pill. kill and com- yeah. to die in committee or you know die on the floor, some sort of a poison pill. So that's the other thing to be on the lookout yes, for. Yes, exactly. There's all kinds of legislative shenanigans that can happen. And I want to point, too, that we are of the most extreme position on this show, which really isn't even extreme because most of you agree. It's not just lawmakers. It's their spouses, too. Family members, all of them, bad them from trading stock. Yes, I know it's a sacrifice. Don't go into public service. I don't know what to tell you. And so, at least to their credit, not going to hear this often, but uh, uh, Senator Warren and Senator Steve Daines teaming up. Let's put this up there on the screen. This is actually a bipartisan bill, one of the reasons that we wanted to go ahead and highlight it, to file a stock ban bill that's part of what you would see. And you actually see that they would ban lawmakers and their spouses from owning and trading individual stocks. This is the most important thing. Yes. And... It goes further because now we have, especially coming out of the Senate, we have a bunch of different proposals at this point. We've talked to you before about the Ossoff proposal, uh, which had previously been the the one that sort of went the furthest because it included the family members. But his proposal is you have to put the stocks in a blind trust. There's all kinds of ways around that one, too. So that one was better, you know, than obviously the status quo and better than the the Holly bill also is a blind trust, but doesn't include some of the family members. So it wasn't even as far reaching. Family members. Yeah, uh, it wasn't even as far reaching as Ossoff's. The Warren Danes bill here. Again, bipartisan effort, which is great to see and part of why there's so much political pressure to move on this thing. This is the furthest reaching one because it would not, it's not saying, okay, you can put it in a blind trust. It's saying you can't have these things at all. Um, There's eight senators who have lined up, though, behind the Ossoff Kelly bill. So it's an open question which one of these things ultimately moves, which is why we're breaking this down for you because it really matters a lot 
which version you end up getting if we end up getting a version at all, because there are still a lot of obstacles on the path. But all of those caveats aside, I think we have to say, Sagar, I mean, this is an astonishing thing to watch no, because crazy. it actually feels like democracy worked a little bit. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's like nuts. this is normally only like you, Jeff Bezos gets to feel like lawmakers yes. are responsive <laughs> to his demands. And so, again, caveats, it's a long way from a done deal. But there's been significant movement from Pelosi, first and foremost, from Schumer. He also um, initially didn't really want to say anything about it and now has come out in favor of some sort of a ban. You have Republicans on board. You have Democrats on board. You've had enough outside pressure to force them to at least pretend like they're doing something. And now we have an opportunity to hold them to account and actually demand that they follow through on what they're saying here. Um, as always, we have to give huge credit to Unusual Whale who yes. really kicked off this whole thing, um, who did the reporting on the, the public disclosures through the Stock Act, was able to put it together and say, look at these people are all beating the S&P 500. Look at these people are all beating the Wall Street traders who are supposed to do this for their job. Look at how they made this trade. And then, oh, lo and behold, they had committee business that was relevant to that company. Look at how this all works. That sparked a lot of reporting from mainstream outlets that helped to put pressure on these lawmakers. And then, of course, you all showing that rage, showing the bipartisan desire to have this little modicum of anti-corruption uh, cleanup go through, that has made a difference in pushing this thing ultimately forward. And then on the inside, Ryan Grimm has some new reporting about how uh, AOC actually was involved in helping to force a, a discharge petition and kind of force Pelosi's right. hand. That forces a bill out of a committee. So she, right. she put pressure on behind the scenes, recognizing this public push, and that's what ultimately forced Pelosi to come out and say something. Yeah, that's right. You know, unusual whales, once again, credit to him. He actually put out a timeline. It's kind of fascinating to me. It's almost exactly a year ago. Ago, Crystal, that you and I first did our report on the Unusual Whale Senate report about people who beat the stock market. Oh, wow. So January 2021 is when he per first put out his first Senate report, and February 2021 is when we were the first people to report it. I'm not taking whole credit for this. Obviously, he's the one who did it. We helped popularize it. It became an internet meme, and then from there, kind of went off to the races, and obviously, we've been participating in it from the ground up. But let me just highlight that and stick in it again. I know that things seem dire right now, but but look, this was a groundswell movement of the internet, born of young people, of people people who watch our show, young people who posted it online, the TikTok traders who yeah. copied Nancy Pelosi because they know they want you. To, they don't wanted you to believe to disbelieve your eyes that they could beat the stock market. We knew it was corrupt. It was the most glaring thing possible. I and mean, when you see the dollar amounts and the figures when they're getting rich and everybody else is not, we just knew it was BS. And so credit to all of you, really. You know, all of us, I guess you know, for helping participate in this movement. It's been one of the most heartening things that I've seen in quite a long time. And it is fascinating, too, because we still face a number of people who are willing to say the quiet part out loud. Uh, Senator Tommy Tuberville of Alabama pulled a Crenshaw yeah. whenever he was interviewed <laughs> yesterday. <Crenshaw> -esque. <laughs> Let's put this up there on the screen. I'm going to refer to the pulling a Crenshaw from now on. <laughs> he says, banning stock trades, I quote, I think it's ridiculous. They might as well start sending robots up here. I think it would really cut back on the amount of people that would want to come up here and serve. Hmm. Yeah, uh, well, if it did. Robots, and it, interesting idea. Yeah, but honestly, at this point, probably better off. Probably better off. Uh, and look, if it were to prevent Senator Tuberville from serving in the United States Senate, I think that probably would be a net positive, mm -hmm. okay? I mean, this is part of what I'm talking about. These people want to have their cake and eat it too. They want to use inside information, privilege, and status, and all the trappings of power in the United States Senate and be able to not profit off of their position and hold millions and millions of dollars. Senator Tuberville himself is already a millionaire. He's a wealthy dude. He's a millionaire man. Many times over, he's fine. This is the point. It's never enough for those people. And you know, we live in a free country. Nobody asks you to run for Senate. You can go down in Alabama on some beach mansion and do whatever you, Gulf Shores, right? That's what it's called. I think so, uh, yeah. They can go hang out on the Gulf and do whatever the hell they want uh, down there. Nobody's stopping you, but you want to be able to trade while you're also in the Senate. And that is the absolute line that cannot be crossed here. And what I always find here is that it's amazing that they're willing to even say the quiet part out loud. Yeah. So Alabamians, is, I don't know if that's what they're called, but okay. I think uh, so. Pay attention. 
Alabama and the rest of the country. This is what they, this is, they think so little of you that they want to be able to get away with it. And don't be, don't think for a second that he is not just the one guy willing to say it because there are a lot of people behind the scenes. I've been making calls from Capitol Hill. From what I understand, the institutional backlash to this, so many of these people know they can't pull a Crenshaw and just say it. Yeah. But they are going to try everything in their power to kill this bill. Yes, and they would be happy to partner with Pelosi on a poison right. pill or whatever right. it takes to have this public show of, oh, of course we support this anti-corruption. Yes, we're in favor of it. And then find some way, some excuse. This is the one thing Democrats, it's the only thing basically the Democrats are good at is finding, coming up with an excuse for why they can't do the super popular things um, that people support. But this represents significant movement. And oh, by the way, a little bit relevant to Senator Tuberville's comments here is uh, the fact yes. that yeah. he himself has performed exceptionally well, let's mm. go ahead and put that unusual whales report up on the screen. Among the top performers listed there, what do you know? Senator Tommy Tuberville, and of course you can see this is a highly bipartisan list. He's not doing quite as well, though, as his uh, his pal yeah. in uh, his ideological pal, Dan Crenshaw, <laughs> nor is he performing as well as uh, Nancy Pelosi herself. So he does have a little bit of work to do, but obviously this whole being in the Senate thing has been very personally, financially beneficial to him. So you can understand yes. why he would be loath to see that change. Let that me hurt. also highlight the comments of Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell who also uh, is going to be very influential in this fight, he says he considers legislation and, quote, see what may be appropriate. Uh, I would just remind you all that the senator and his wife made deep ties to the Chinese Communist Party, and his wife, who somehow was allowed to serve as our Commerce and Transportation Secretary's father, is a massive Chinese shipping magnate who's like a, mul like a multi-millionaire many times over, who she herself has profited off of uh, in terms of the, royalties on the book. One of the many glaring yeah, hypocrisies nobody ever of the talks Trump administration. That's a great point. And, you know, a lot of Republicans <laughs> don't ever want to talk about that one. You know, Elaine Chow should never have been able to serve in high office. And it's amazing, too, that he's the Senate minority leader and his wife is out there worth $20 million with some crazy, you know, Chinese shipping cash. That's as shady as it gets. Once again, these people are corrupt to their core. And they always claim that it has nothing to do with it. Let's find out. Let's find out the truth. Yeah. You well, know? Here's the Prove sad it. thing. Here's the sad thing is that, um, you know, Crenshaw made those comments about like, yeah, oh, how can better we better ourselves, ourselves yeah. if we aren't able Quit, to trade stocks while, yeah. while we're in Congress? Yeah. Uh, the sad fact of the matter is that even if this stock trading ban goes through, there are sadly still many ways for these people to get oh, rich yeah. off of their office, right. especially once they finish their quote unquote public service and then go sell themselves off to the highest bidder, selling out our country, selling out their constituents, book, you know? all that stuff. Yeah. So don't worry guys, there's still plenty of avenues for you to like, you know, line up like a pig at the trough uh, off of your public service. Yeah. But again, I don't want to undersell it because even seeing Simple. the little glimmers of how this pressure came to be, and I think there are, are two major factors, maybe three. First, you have you know the initial spark, the grassroots outrage. Then you have the mainstream reporting that they start getting asked questions about it at the podium because these regular reporters in D.C., they weren't going to ask about unusual whales. Mm -hmm. But once Business Insider and other people started picking it up, then they started getting pressure when they were doing press conferences. And the fact that this was a, a bipartisan thing made it so the Democrats saw Kevin McCarthy starting to posture about, oh, maybe this is something Republicans will run on for the midterms, that added an additional pressure of like, oh, shit, well, we can't let mm -hmm. them, you know, They can't one-up one up us. Yeah. They can't one-up us on Why? this thing. And so that also helped to create pressure. I think it's really encouraging to see an effort like this that truly was grassroots bipartisan. How many things exist in the country that aren't just like wrecked by culture war right. and totally tribally divided? This is one of the few that I can see that falls into that lane and you can see how effective it was and how much pressure it has put on people here in Washington. Very true. Crystal, you just did a, a video for More Perfect yeah, Union. Yeah, so More Perfect Union has um, picked up on this and they did some great research about just breaking down, okay, when you've got two different bills that are kind of similar but right. have some key differences what actually determines which one's going to move and pass and which one is going to die in committee? Mm -hmm. And they track the way that members of Congress and their stock portfolios and how they stand to benefit or how they stand to be financially hurt by the legislation that they're considering, how that can determine the track and the fate 
of these bills as they move through Congress. So I partnered with them on this video, breaking down some of that information. Let's take a look. Last summer, More Perfect Union started a project that had not been undertaken in nearly a decade, reviewing the stock holdings of every member of the United States House and of the Senate. What we discovered is that when members of Congress buy and sell corporate stocks, they're not just padding their own personal wealth. Something much more corrupt is happening here. You can see it by looking closely at two major bills before Congress right now. Both of them have bipartisan support, both were approved down of committee, and both are considered a priority of the president's. But only one is on the fast track to congressional passage, while the other can't even get a floor vote. Why? Digging through Congress's trades, we uncovered numerous brazen examples of the corrupting influence of corporate stock ownership. And we realized the key difference between those two bills, the one that's set to be passed into law benefits the stock portfolios of members of Congress, and the other bill does not. I'm Crystal Ball, and this is The Classroom by More Perfect Union. So guys, check out that full video on our website also, or on our channel on YouTube, also on the More Perfect Union channel. They did some phenomenal research here, digging into exactly what are the factors, the money that is driving some of these decisions behind the scenes and how that would relate to a stock trading ban. So I highly recommend that to you and not just because I was involved. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. That's right. Just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut. Our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it. You get to ask us questions. All that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.